Hello and welcome to another video. Today, and I promise, this is the last time we're going to visit it before we move on. But we have a little bit more pain to endure. And I'm going to go through the post-match press conference of Eric Ten Hag. Um, the post-match interview of Hoyland. So a little bit of positivity there. At least one player played good for United. And then I think Christian Eriksen as well. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go through that. I'm going to react to that. See if I haven't seen this. This is a, a blind react. I haven't I haven't uh, listened to his quotes yet before. Um, so yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Looking forward to it, sort of. Um, and yeah, let's without further ado, let's get into it. Obviously, for context, unless you've been living under a bloody rock, um, I'm sorry to inform you. Spoiler alert that we did lose to Galatasaray and we are bottom of the Champions League group with zero points. Nil point, zero. Mm, lovely. And um, as we speak, I'm not actually recording this in the morning like I normally do. I'm recording um, in the evening because I'm going into the, the office tomorrow um, as opposed to me working from home usually. So I'm currently watching Newcastle <laughs> beating PSG 3-1 as we speak. Um, bit greedy, if you ask me. A bit greedy. All we want is a win at home against Galatasaray. And they hadn't won in, in England, what was it, 14, 15 years? That's all I wanted. But yeah, Newcastle being a bit greedy. Draw to AC Milan. Well, I say win to PSG. PSG have just scored. Momentum could be with them. It, I wouldn't put it by PSG to get a couple more goals um, and get a result out of it. However, that uh, thank you know my mind is going away from the Manchester United game because it's clever. You know, you 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 do a your body has the instinctiveness to try and avoid. Um, trauma, doesn't it? And that's exactly what I was doing there. But, you know, I'm going to force myself into it to listen to, to Ten Hag in his post -mass conference uh, conference. I want him to be completely open and honest. That's what I want. I want honesty. I don't want things... I don't want him to say that everything is rosy. We're just going through a, 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 a tough patch. But, you know, the players are training really well. That's what I used to hate. Ollie's press conferences where he, he goes, you know, we've had a fantastic week in training. Brilliant. Glad, glad, glad you're training well because we're absolutely shite on the pitch. Um, I don't know what I want Eric to say. I don't know what I want him to say, but we'll see and we'll react to it as it goes. Excuses. <laughs> Can you give an explanation then for what's going on? So he said um, that you said in your programme notes that there was n there were no excuses for United's start to the season. Uh, and he says, so maybe you can give an explanation then for for the start, I guess. See what he says. <laughs> but when I give explanation, <laughs> then uh, mm -hmm. hey, you will see uh, excuses. So and there are no excuses. OK, maybe... Uh, we have a little bit unbalanced left side, uh, but then still uh, we can't make the errors uh, we now making, and uh, we have to do better. And uh, it's the simple fact we have to win our games. Mm, yeah. So he says maybe we have an unbalanced left side. I think we've got worse issues than that. If that's the best excuse that you can come up with, or explanation that you can come up with then I don't think he knows exactly what's going on. Rick, are you confident that the players either are listening to you or are capable of doing what you want? Because you keep coming in here and saying we need to do better, we're making mistakes. And then the next game, it doesn't seem to improve and the mistakes keep coming. No. Um... Question, are you confident the players are listening to you because you keep saying we need to stop making mistakes and then we go to the next game and they've made loads of mistakes. That's what he said. So if it were the same mistakes, you, yeah, probably you could say, but I have seen a team uh, that was really connected. I've seen a team with a great spirit uh, and they played 
in the stages of the game, uh, fantastic. And uh, score good goals twice up, yeah, totally in control in the game. And uh, then all of a sudden uh, we make yeah, a mistake, um, yeah, in, an error. And yeah, that, I know football is a, uh, a game of mistakes, yeah, but of course I, I have to give coaching instructions how we have to deal uh, with this, such occasions and such situations. For a long time, like what he's saying is right. We were playing great the first like half an hour and then a mistake. But the issue is, why are we so mentally fragile? Why, if opposition scores one goal, do we crumble? Or even if we score, if we score or they score, as soon as there's a goal, we crumble. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you think if an opposition scores a goal against us, we should, I know this isn't d directly relating to the, uh, uh, to the game against Galatasaray because I know we went 1-0 up. But it, when we go down, surely then, like if we've been playing well, the mentality should be, okay, keep doing what we're doing and we will score eventually. But instead, it's like, oh, shit, they've scored. Oh, my God. Oh, what happens if they score another one? Oh, my God, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Oh, they've scored another. That's literally what we do. I don't get it. And if we score, we're like, oh, my God, we're in front. Yay. All high-fiving each other while the opposition puts a ball in the back of a net. That seems to what happens. Like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> um. yeah, but, yeah, it happens, and we can punish for it. Clear. Phil. Yeah. Thank you. The fans booed you off at the end. Can you understand them for booing you off? Can you blame them for booing you off? Uh, the fans booed you off. Can you uh, can you blame the fans for booing you off? What do you say to them for booing you off? Yes, I can understand. Uh, they can um, expect uh, I'm responsible for this team, for the performance, for the result, uh, together uh, with my squad. And in this moment, we don't get the results, and that they are then disappointed. I can understand. And yeah, we have to do better. Uh, but as I said, also, and um, I have seen a team uh, with a great spirit, and also uh, um, a team and it, uh, was backed by a crowd uh, from the start till the end. And of course, in the end, the fans are disappointed, as we are. We are also very disappointed, but also that has to be fuel. And that is the cool thing from this team. Every time uh, they find the energy uh, in every game, every start of the game, there was a team uh, with a lot of energy and with a good motivation to go into the game. Ah, yeah, start of the game. Well, one thing about the fans, I think that's a good response, to be fair. You know, because I think there would be managers in the past, maybe with Mourinho, I don't know, that would say, you know, I prefer my the fans to be behind the team. The team need the fans at the moment. Like, something like that. But to after putting in performance like that, after the season that we've had, I think you can't start the season that we've had you can't say that it's completely understandable for the for the fans to be to be angry i mean our, our season is crumbling to salvage our season we need to win basically every single remaining champions league game like third is not good enough <laughs> we don't want to go in the europa league christ one i don't think we could win it anyway um and two is that it is that our season over just after the group stage of the champions league because we're not in the we're not in the top four race so we've just got to enjoy our champions league run this season and if our champions league run is third of the group stage like if it if it's if it ends before it even starts then yeah of course fans are not going to be happy eric you've put in to do a job here long term a very successful season last season but you know managers are judged by results. Is there any concern for you about your position? Or do you feel you have the confidence of the club hierarchy and the board to get through this situation and get the team back on track? Yeah, last season uh, oh, uh, went brilliant, terrific, and more than we could expect. But also when we went in this project, we knew uh, that there will, be, there will be coming caps. And in this moment, we are a very difficult period, and as everyone is seeing. But yeah, we come out together. And we are fighting together and we are stick together. Eh? We are behind each other. And eh? that is uh, me, the, uh, the directors, uh, the team, eh? all together, uh, we will fight. And um, this is not us. Uh, we know we have to do better. And in togetherness, we will come out.
Yeah, I don't think he's he, he should be under pressure yet. There are some United fans that are starting to turn to Ten Hag out, but I think the majority, the majority aren't because there's been too much sort of unprecedented stuff that has happened with the with Manchester United this season. You know, with Anthony, with the Greenwood situation, you know, with all the injuries, it is it is unprecedented times at United. So, had we have everyone fit, you know, have we not faced massive massive amount of injuries? Some injuries you can expect, but the amount of injuries that United have had, um, plus everything off field, then with, with Sancho situation as well. Um, I think people would be a little less forgiving, but for me, I think I just can't stop focusing on the uh, the the sale of the club. That's that's the the thing for me, you know, and that's the most important thing for me. I mean, yes, I mean the football on the pitch is almost secondary to me at this point. We're playing crap. Um, but I just want, I don't want decades of failure to be secured with the Glazer staying in charge. That's it. I know it's not, I just always keep talking about it. And I know we're doing a bloody um, post-match press conference, but but yeah, it just, my mind always gets to that. Um, yeah, Tenag has made mistakes. Of course he has. But... Um, every, the majority of United fans, including myself, we're, we're still firmly Ten Hag in. I hate the whole Ten Hag or Oli in, Oli out, Mourinho in, Mourinho out, Ten Hag in, Ten Hag out. But yeah, I still want him to stay. And it's going to take a lot to move me on that as well. Mike, Eric, with, with your goalkeeper, if, if you see that um, there's confidence lost in him around the the defence, would you be afraid to, to make a change in that position or is he your number one you brought in here and he's your number one for the season going forward? Oh, we are happy with our goalkeeping group. <laughs> Definitely with Andre and Andre, come on, he was in one semi-final Champions League. He was last season, he was in a final Champions League. So he has the capabilities to be uh, to be one of the best goalkeeper in the world. He showed that and, and he will do. Um, we already have seen in, in games, his great capabilities, also his personality. If he make a mistake, eh, he will bounce back. And oh, that that oh, this is obviously a question about the goalkeeper. I forgot to say that out loud. Um, I'm sure he will do uh, in the coming games as well. Last question. Yeah, I think with Onana, he's obviously been terrible. He's cost us games. He's cost us points, both in the Premier League and in the Champions League. Um, but like I say, like Eric said, it's too early to tell. You know, he has shown quality. You don't get, you don't, you know, he, he for Inter Milan, he was unbelievable. Got to the, got to the final. Um, he, he's still, he is a top class keeper. We just haven't seen it yet. So whether that will come, you know, in the short term, David, like if everyone wants to bring this back to David De Gea, should he have stayed or left? In the short term, David De Gea probably. We'll be better off with David Ayer, of course, than Onana for what for you know. He, I'm sure he would have saved more of the shots that, uh, more of the more of the the shots that have led to goals this season. I'm sure he would have. Um, and we might have more points with David Ayer in that. However, in one and a half, two years' time. Hopefully, when when we have an identity, when the the we we've learned to be able to play out the back comfortably, you know, with a sweeper keeper, when Onana finds his feet, stops making these mistakes, um, looks is more confident, and it's okay. I think he's putting on a front a little bit, you know. At, in in his post match interviews, Onana comes out and says, "Yeah, it's my fault. I'm playing terrible," you know. You know, I, I need to improve this. I know this. No, I know it's not good enough. And fans do respect that when uh, a player takes accountability for his poor performances. However, like I say, that's great if 
if you improve upon it. There's only so many times you can say, yeah, I was shite. You can't just keep saying, yeah, I'm shite again. I mean, that gets draining. <laughs> we just want an imp seeing improvement, but hopefully that will come. And I, I haven't, I haven't given given up on Onana. Uh, you can see if you'd have to scroll in by minute twice, uh, if you twice. What, what you put that down to, and how do you remedy that? So, so that's that's a fair point. Huh? We conceded twice after scoring. Uh, basically, why? That's his. Uh, that's his question. That. Um, we have to keep uh, and even more than first focus concentration uh, but also then take more control in the game uh, by even more compact and uh, in possession keeping more the ball in such moments after you score a goal or after you concede a goal and you have to take more control see what the opponent is going to do and then take advantage because <laughs> always uh, when you score a goal opponent will give away more more spaces and clear. And when you concede the goal, yeah, they will come even more to go for a second. So if you know that, yeah, then take more control in the game, uh, as I just explained. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, I don't even know if it is control of the game. It just seems to be lapses in concentration. Like, because it always happens, whether we, sc whether we score, like I say, whether we score like it did in, in this match on two occasions, or whether they score and then we crumble, it's, it's just lapses of concentration. It's so strange. I don't, I don't get it. Like, why has this group of players, I mean, the, the, the last season we had the most clean sheets. That tells you something. That tells you that we were able to maintain our concentration for a long period of time. These players were. Okay, the, the defence had Martinez in, but Martinez, even when he, when he wasn't injured, started badly. So what has changed since then? And you, you can say Onana, but every goal hasn't been Onana's fault. You know, If David De Gea was in net, we would still have conceded a lot of goals. Because the vast majority that we conceded haven't been Onana's fault. And ha Onana hasn't been able to save the vast majority, right? David De Gea would have still conceded a lot of goals. So why is our mentality completely different? It's weird. It's like the, the players are almost like mentally fatigued. What is it? Is it, like I say, is it all of the off-field stuff that's happened with the club? It could well be. The, the the players are just mentally drained from it all. They they don't they don't feel that sort of affiliation for the uh, like for the club to fight for the to fight for the club with all of the the shite that's going off off the field, you know, with all the negativity surrounding it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's it. It's affecting the concentration. I don't know. But one thing's for sure. We are completely just lose concentration so easily compared with last season, even though the majority of the players are the same. It doesn't make much sense. If anyone knows, buddy, put it in the comments, boys, because let I, I try and get on the blower to 10 ag. Get him to read the comments. Christ. Okay, thank you very much. All right, okay. So that was that was Eric. Right, let's go. Let's leave. Hoyland till last. Let's go, Ericsson. Best till last. I think it's, it's only one uh, minute. It's a big disappointment. Uh, it was to, to honestly say, it was very quiet, interesting. What ultimate? Uh, I think the question was, I didn't, I didn't hear it, but what's it like in the dressing room? It's quiet. Lee got good. away from you tonight. Yeah, I think we, uh, I think we have some good spells in the game, but in the end, I think when we, uh, at the moment when we go ahead and we score a goal, then uh, always short after we concede. Um, and of course, that makes it very difficult for us to, to stay in the game. And that's, uh, that's something that we have to change and has to change uh, very quick. Yeah, no, no sheet. Yeah, I mean, m much of the same thing. We always concede after we, after we score. Same yeah, thing. Comp Mentally fragile. That's it, basically. Confidence in the squad at the minute as to why that's happening? No, I don't think it's confidence. I think it's more the... I think it is. Because it wouldn't keep happening time and time again. Well, not necessarily confidence, but just 
concentration. Uh, the awareness and the sharpness uh, to yeah. really keep our inform and coming ahead twice. I mean, you can't, uh, you shouldn't throw that away. Um, and we've done that uh, even some other games this season. Um, um, yeah, I don't think it's confidence. I think it's more that the sharpness and the and the wrong decisions at the at the wrong times. And but that is very telling. That is why are we not ready? Why are we not ready for the season? And why are we not getting better? We weren't ready at the start of the season to start the season. We looked, everyone came out of the blocks and we looked like we're still in the bloody box. Like, we looked terrible. And then we don't seem to be getting any better. Why is that sharpness not coming with more games? You would think, okay, the latching, the lacking at the start of the season, you can forgive it. Okay. I don't understand why we're not as ready as other teams. However, okay, I accept it. We're matching. We're we're lacking match sharpness. Maybe some fitness issues. I don't know why, but yeah, okay, we'll take it. At least we'll improve. We're ten games into the season now. That is, you should be at full speed in terms of mentally sharp and physically at full fitness as well. So what's going on? And a bit of uh, yeah the. The not lucky part is uh, is following us around at the moment. How much work needs to be done to get back to the levels? It's not about luck. There was nothing l unlucky yesterday. Not one thing was unlucky. We brought that up completely upon ourselves. Three individual mistakes. Amrabat giving away the ball for what was it? The the third. Um, no, no, no. That was an honour. Amrabat giving away the ball for the second, and then Lindelof was nowhere bloody near the first one. Um, Delo absolutely shite. So every single one was an individual mistake. There's no, it wasn't. It wasn't about luck or lucky or unlucky. Levels that you want to get back to. Yeah, no, a lot. Uh, but again, it's, it's details. I mean, today as well, the, the chances they have is uh, is from our mistakes. And uh, yeah, if we don't make the mistakes, we don't uh, we don't concede as we do. And uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, yeah how we play. I mean, it's it's how we play. Does it? <laughs> how we play is how we play. Brilliant. I feel like it's a long way back in this competition. No, luckily it's only the the start of the the competition. We only played two games, and we know there's still. A be the start and end, wouldn't it? Uh, a lot of games to, to play and catch up, and we know at that time, even for, for the next game, we need to, to win every game to have an opportunity to, to go through, and uh, that's our aim. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much. Now, the only, the one man that can hold his head up high, the final interview. Yeah, like you say, uh, a little bit, um, yeah, uh, difficult. Uh, I feel... Happy and not happy at the same time. Um, of course, it's uh, it's not about the, the individual performance. It's about um, getting the three points. And uh, yeah, at the moment we are not doing good enough. Well, yeah, it is good that you know he cares about the individual accolades as well. He's got that swagger about him because the best players do. You know, you think of Ronaldo, how much you know how much he did care about the individual accolades. And you can say what you want about, okay, you know, not being a team player. He only cares about himself, that kind of stuff. But, you know, he's won a lot. So he must be a decent team player because it, the amount he's won. Um, so to have that s sort of mentality. Now, obviously, comparing Hoyland to Ronaldo, you know, I'm just comparing what he's said, not not the player. Obviously, Hoyland's going to be much better. Joking, joking. Um but yeah, that he has a that that similar mentality, that that dogged mentality, you know, that almost arrogant, little bit of arrogance about it, you know, the individual. Yes, the three points are important. The, I, I'm happy, but not happy. I think that there'll be a lot of players that would come out and just say, you know, it doesn't matter that I scored two because we haven't got three points. He says I'm happy, but not happy. So he's got that he's got that arrogance about him, you know. He wants to do well for himself, and in turn do well for the team what's the feeling in the dressing room because with a quarter of the game to go and you scored to make it 2-1 playing well it looked it looked like we were in a great position but then it, it just it did fall apart for us unfortunately yeah we need to uh, we need to remember we can't um, get goals uh, right after we score now we are 
had a had a had a few uh, games now where, where they just score after we scored. Um, so we we need to to go back and, and anal analyze that tomorrow and uh, and talk about it uh, in the group. And of course, it's it's about it's a tough period now, but we need to stick together, and, and that's the only way we can get out of this um, this period. Now you're going. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly the same that everyone else has said, so I haven't got really got anything to add on that. Oh, it was the first one. Marcus involved in that good, good link-up play and a terrific header. <laughs> yeah, it's about getting in there. Um, for me, I, I always try to 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 get into into the this, this, the dangerous positions. Um, today, I I got the balls um, three times if you count the, the offside goal as well. And uh, yeah, um... yeah, he literally like got the ball three times. And scored through like three goals. Essentially, one was offside, but um, yeah, to feed the man, and he will he will score. That's all he needs is service. Imagine Hoyland, right? This is a big take, yeah. This is a big take. Hoyland would be top goal scorer in the Premier League if he was playing for Man City, and you know, of course, and they played him instead of Haaland. Hoyland would be top scorer if he was in Haaland's position, basically. That's it. Oh my god, what a goal! Sorry, I'm, I'm watching Newcastle as well. That's 4 1. Mm. Yeah, uh, I've been bored to, Sharp. to be scoring goals, and, and, and now I was happy that I, I got two more now today. Um, but again, if uh, we talk about Marcus, um, yeah, like you said also in, in an interview, we try to, to talk, uh, we talk uh, to, to, to each other, and, and he knows that, that I'm going to be there now. He knows that I, I, can, I can keep up with his pace when we go on the counter, and uh, we saw a, a glimpse of that today. The second goal, you had a long time to think about it. You finished in front of the Stratford end, fantastic noise. Just take us through what that feels like oh that goal was so nice i love it for so long we've had you know just an absolute we've had we've had like relatively slow old strikers we've had you know ibra cavani obviously ronaldo for so long we've had strikers that that haven't been able to do that um you know, Rashford probably has got the pace to do it. Whether he's got the sort of the the power to do it to sort of shrug defenders off, he hasn't. But it's just so nice to have somebody capable of doing that up front. Yeah, it was a good feeling. I got and also the the finish to sprint to be sprinting at full speed, full speed, and then have such a delicate a, a, a delicate finish. Had uh, cheated a little bit before because of the offside, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was an incredible goal. Um, I like to call that a signature Rasmus goal. You know, on the left side, running a lot. Um, so yeah, ah, that's the arrogance again. Speaking to speaking about himself in third person, that is arrogance. You know, he's only he's only twenty years old, and he's arrogant, and I love it. Um, it was nice. So now. Copenhagen, home and away, need to win those games, and obviously a, a very familiar club for you. But we have to win them, don't we? Yes, uh, like you said, we need to get the yeah, we need to get some points now uh, if we wanna if we wanna play uh, Champions League after 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 the group stage. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to play against them um, because. Uh, it's a former club and my brothers are playing there and I have a big heart for Copenhagen but uh, again um, yeah now I play in Manchester United and, and we need to get some points out of them yeah he's got a big heart for him but please bloody score a hattie home and away please lad and then say sorry thank you very much well then tonight thank you very much thank you right thank you very much right that is it um, for the video please do like and subscribe I appreciate you that I promise, that is it. That is it for Galatasaray. We are done with it, right? Until our next painful episode, which will be um, Brentford on Saturday. That That is our next pain, but uh, we, we're over this pain. We're over this pain now. So Friday, I'll be doing a preview for Brentford in the morning. Um, so tomorrow, I'll be doing a preview for Brentford, um, release Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching.
and I'll see you next time. Please do like, subscribe, hit that bell notification because even though this is a small channel, only only 2,200 now, we just ticked over, even though we're still a small channel, we're still growing, um, it's less, it's less, less people have the bell notification on than normal, which is absolute bloody disgrace, yeah? So hit that bell notification as well. I appreciate you boys for watching. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao.